Do you struggle to pray? Do you find it hard to shut the door and spend time in prayer? Do you find it more convenient to turn to your friends or coworkers during difficult times instead of going on your knees to communicate with God? That's a sign that something is wrong. There is already a spiritual issue at hand. And if you don't recognize the game the devil is playing, you might find yourself lost amidst the chaos. Prayer is a powerful weapon that God has given every believer to face any situation in life. Refusing to use this weapon is like shooting yourself in the leg. Going about your tasks without wielding your sword to confront the challenges in your life limits you. It prevents you from receiving what God wants for you. It's like a soldier heading to the war front, leaving behind his gun, sword, shield, armor, and everything at home. That's what it's like to go about your day without prayer. Facing the day without prayer is akin to venturing into the snow without clothes. It is essentially self-destructive. Have you ever wondered why Jesus began his earthly ministry with prayer? After John publicly declared him as the Lamb of God, he spent 40 days and nights in the wilderness, praying and fasting. He was preparing himself for the work he had to do. Right before the pinnacle of his earthly assignment, what did he do? He went to Gethsemane and prayed. While the disciples slept, he prayed with great anguish of soul, and his sweat dripped from his body like blood. Jesus is the Word of God from heaven. He had been with God since the beginning of creation, but when he came to earth for his assignment, he didn't sideline prayer. He understood the importance of prayer and recognized that without this powerful weapon, he would not be able to fulfill his ministry. Mark 1.35 Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Despite his busy life, he didn't get caught up in the paparazzi or forget about prayer. Dear child of God, what makes you think you can successfully go through life, overcome the devil, have all the blessings of God, and be triumphant in death without prayer? Whatever made you think prayer was an option? What made you think you could be too busy to pray and life will continue to go smoothly? The oil lubricating your wheel making the drive smooth and hassle-free, is prayer. Once you stop it, it's only a matter of time before the engine becomes dry and eventually stops. Prayer keeps your spirit man awake and alert. You already know the world is full of evil. The evil you can see, the ones you perceive, and the ones you do not see or perceive. How do you know if someone is plotting your downfall? How will you know the right way to react, what to do, and where to go when everything in your life turns upside down? Without prayer, you will become lost in the crowd, lost in the ocean of pain and anguish. That is why you need to go back to the place of prayer. Your relationship with God depends on how much time you spend with Him in prayer. You love God. You want to live for Him. You want the whole of your life to glorify Him, you say but you don't spend time getting to know him. When you just met your spouse, he or she was just a random stranger like every other person. But you built a relationship. You spent time together, talked, laughed, shared happy and sad moments together. And that was the foundation of your love. How then do you claim to love God and not spend time with him? How come you claim to love God but are too busy for him? You always find it burdensome when your conscience pricks you that you haven't prayed. Then you quickly mumble words together. You are constantly falling under every temptation the devil throws at you because you have not fortified yourself with prayers. The Bible says in Psalm 91.1, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. You are not dwelling in the shelter of the Most High when you do not pray. And that is why you cannot rest under his shadow. That is why every arrow from the enemy gets to you. That is why the weight of every attack of the devil pushes you down. 
That is why the devil is able to fill your mind with various negative thoughts that breed fear in you. If you are confused about what to do, where to go, and what will become of your life, it's because you are yet to spend time with God. When you spend time with God in prayer, he will give you the blueprint of your life. You will try to be like everyone else because you will already know who you are. However, you cannot know who you are when you are too busy to stay with the one who has made you. Your heart won't be enlarged enough to grasp the dimension of the revelation of your destiny to walk in it. While many people are confused and agitated, the one who prays would hear a voice behind him telling him, this is the way to go and you should walk therein. That will foster your speed in life as you don't have to wait in confusion at any crossroads. You see people being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. They don't seem to have any backbone or even a mind of their own. They don't know what is right or wrong and would often shift based on the environment they find themselves in. That is because they have not built capacity in prayer. They have not spent enough time with God to become rooted in Him. They are just like a plant grown in a greenhouse and suddenly exposed to harsh weather. That plant will not be able to stand because its root is still shallow. Do you seek blessings from God? Well, why don't you ask him? Do you seek healing for your body? God holds the key to heal you. Do you seek answers to certain questions about your life? Go to the maker of life and destiny. Everything you want in life, you can get through prayer. Great possibilities await those who take prayer seriously. As powerful as prayer is, it is not all kinds of prayer that yield power before God. Some prayers sound like a broken record for just one reason, because those who pray do not believe that God can answer them. The Bible tells us in James 1.5, if any one of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Faith is the ingredient that seals your prayer and makes it irresistible. Jesus is your perfect example, so you need to learn from his lifestyle of prioritizing prayer and do the same. He created time for prayer amidst his busy schedule, and you should also do the same. You can achieve so much more when you put prayer at the forefront of your life's endeavors. When you see prayer as what it truly is, the reason you breathe and are still alive, you will not want to stop praying. No one forces anyone to breathe in the air. We all know that without it, life would leave us. Prayer is the air of your spiritual life. You should not forget that the spiritual controls every other aspect. So when you refuse to breathe and are gasping for survival, every other aspect of your life will react to that almost dead state. A person who goes on without praying for a long time will eventually experience spiritual death. Your life's objective is to remain alive in spirit and soul, and your spirit will come alive at the scent of water. Praying according to the will of God takes your prayer to a higher level. Praying the word of God back to him will give you a speedy answer to your requests. Heaven and earth will pass away, but no part of his word will go without being fulfilled. And he honors his word more than his name, ensuring that none of his word falls to the ground. Beloved, that is the power of backing your prayers with the word of God. Beloved, find rest in God's presence from all the troubles of the world because you can obtain everything you are looking for from God. And He alone can give you everything pertaining to life and godliness. Daniel lived a life of prayer. No wonder his life was remarkable and a book of the Bible was even named after him. The officials tried to find something against him, but they found nothing. He excelled in everything he did and the only thing they could hold against him was his prayer life. Those people were not his friends, but they knew he prayed. 
Although you should not pray to show or impress others, do the people around you know that you pray? Does your spouse know you pray? Do your children ever see you pray or even pray with them? Daniel's prayer shut the mouth of the lions. He received revelations of future events and enjoyed deep favor from God because he prayed. Esther's prayer changed the death sentence upon her and her people, and they went from being rejected to becoming a ruling power in the land of their captivity. Beloved, it is time to return to the place of prayer. It is time for you to understand that without prayer, it would be impossible for you to live a victorious life. The Bible says in the book of James, Is anyone among you sick? Let them pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let them sing praise. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. Your prayer is what stands between you and the blessings you desire. Everything you want from God can be yours and much more when you learn to pray. Make it a point of duty to pray always and without ceasing, as an act of obedience to God's command and as a sign of your love, loyalty, and complete dependence on God. Take the time to seek God in prayer, for it is through prayer that you will find strength, guidance, and protection. It is through prayer that you will develop a deep and intimate relationship with your Heavenly Father. Don't neglect the power of prayer, for it is the key to living a victorious and fulfilling life in Christ. May you find solace and strength in the presence of God through fervent prayer. Prayer means talking to God. Prayer means fellowshipping with God. Prayer means to bear out one's heart to God. I'm sure you know all these definitions of prayer by heart. You must have heard them at one time or another. However, it is not enough to know what prayers mean. How often do you pray? And when you pray, do you pray with every sense of intentionality or just to fulfill all righteousness? In this video, I will tell you what happens when you pray with intent every day. So, ensure you watch this video to the end. How often should believers pray? This is a very important question. We should pray every day. Others think praying once a week, especially when they go to church on Sundays, is just fine. And some others believe that the prayer they say at the beginning of the year is enough to sustain them through the year. To clear all doubts, the Bible answers the question in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Pray without ceasing. The Bible admonishes us to pray continually. This means that you should pray every moment of each waking day. While this may not be possible in the literal sense because you have to go about your daily activities, it requires some measure of intent on your part. It requires that you set time aside every day to pray. It could be 30 minutes, every 6 hours, or whatever works for you. The goal is to remain in communion with God all day long. How do we pray? This is also a very important question. Some people do not know how to pray. They do not know what to say when praying. The disciples of Christ also asked him this question and he taught them the Lord's Prayer to guide them whenever they pray. The Lord's Prayer contains all the essentials that your prayer should contain. According to the Lord's Prayer, your prayer should include one prayer of gratitude for all God has done for you. It is very important to cultivate the habit of giving thanks to God for all the good things He has done for you and those around you. 2. Pray for God's will to be established in your life. Establishing God's will in your life ensures that things do not go awry, and even if they do, you can always talk to God about it. When praying, you should also ask for God's provision. God has promised to supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You should ask God to fulfill His promise of supplying all needs in your life. The prayer of forgiveness is also integral. Ask God to forgive you for all the times you have disobeyed His word. You might have sinned either knowingly or unknowingly. Ask God, who knows all things, to forgive all your sins. Most importantly, you should pray against temptations. Temptations from the devil will most likely come your way to cause you to derail from the tracks of your Christian journey. You must ask for grace to say no to these temptations when they come. All these should form the basis of your prayers. 
You can then ask for other things that you need or want, and you can also pray for your loved ones as well. Another way the Bible taught us how to pray is in Philippians 4, 6-7. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. The point here is to always give thanks before tendering your long list of problems before God. When you pray every day with intent, what happens? 1. It helps you develop a relationship with God. Communication helps foster relationships. Spending time with someone and talking to that person all the time goes a long way in building your relationship with that person. Likewise, spending time with God and talking to Him deepens your relationship with Him. God transforms from a casual acquaintance to a loving father and trusted friend. You become a friend of God just like Abraham. You tell God anything and everything. Likewise, God will not do anything that concerns you without telling you about it first. Only by consciously praying can you reach this level of relationship with God. Furthermore, praying with intent every day helps you understand God's loving nature. 1 John 4.9 tells us, This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. God is love, and only by fellowshipping with God through prayers do you fully understand the depth of God's love for you. God's love made Him send His only Son into the world so that you might have life through Him. You were dead because of your sins and trespasses, but God in His infinite mercy gave up Jesus to be the atonement for your sins. This sounds like a fable to some people. They think it is a story that never happened and was made up. Praying with intentionality deepens your understanding of the sacrificial love of God. Also, praying intentionally helps you understand your purpose and helps you find direction in life. One of the most frustrating things in life is living without a purpose. A person without purpose lives life as it comes to him. He has no goals, no dreams, or whatnot. He simply sleeps and wakes up and accepts whatever life throws at him. This is not the way to live. Praying to God reveals your purpose to you. It brings you to the consciousness of why God created and brought you into this life. No one comes to this world by accident. Everyone is the product of God's thoughtfulness. And if God has put you where you are for a reason, the only way to find out the reason is to stay with God. When you spend time with God, you begin to understand the purpose for which God created you, and you start to run with that purpose. You begin to live a meaningful life. You have the drive to fulfill all God has planned for you. When you pray with intent, you gather the strength to avoid temptations. At different times in life, you will experience temptations. Temptation is simply the enticement to sin. It comes from the things you see and hear and the people you socialize with. Temptations come from different sources. When you yield to them, you sin against God and fall short of His glory. Matthew 26, 41 says, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The sure way to avoid temptations is to watch and pray for the grace to resist those temptations. Your spirit man desires to resist those temptations, but it cannot because of the influence of the flesh. Praying without ceasing is the only way to suppress the flesh and avoid temptations. Praying with intent helps you to become more like Jesus. As believers, we ought to grow and become more mature in our walk with God as we progress in the faith. We should conform to Christ more as the days go by, and to be like Christ, some things need to be taken away from our lives. These things stunt our growth and keep us at the same level for so long. Jesus must become greater and I must decrease. This is the mindset of those who desire to be like Christ. You should grow to a point where your desire no longer matters to you. You only want Jesus to be glorified in your life. You desire that the will of God rules in your life. To grow to this point, you need to keep praying for God to work on your heart. This can only happen when you pray every day. Praying every day also gives you the opportunity to share all aspects of your life with God. When you pray, you can talk to God about everything that concerns you. You can talk to Him about the good and the bad. You can tell Him how happy you are about your wins and express your frustrations about your losses. Tell Him about your fears and the worries that keep you up at night. God is interested in listening to them all. And even beyond telling it all to Him, 
ask him to help you. You can ask him to give you strength and fortitude to fight through what lies ahead. You can also ask him to make all your crooked paths straight and give you a testimony. This is what you stand to benefit when you pray to God every day. Praying every day also provides a platform to worship God. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 admonishes you to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. When you pray, you have the privilege to praise and worship God for all the good things He has done in the past, all the good things He is doing now, and all the good things He is set to do in days to come. You can thank Him for His faithfulness that transcends generations. When you thank God, you spur God to do more for you. Worship moves the hand of God and paves the heavens open for an outpour of blessings upon you. So you should remember to worship God when you pray as it commands God's blessings upon you. Praying with intent every day brings miracles to your doorstep. Miracles describe divine intervention in seemingly impossible situations. Maybe you desire a job that you have a slim chance of getting, or any of your loved ones are sick, or you need money to settle some outstanding debts and you are starting to feel overwhelmed by your challenges. When you pray, God causes a change in your situation. He brings a turnaround. You get the job, your sick ones get healed, and He meets your needs. These things happen when you pray with intent every day. Lastly, praying daily with intent keeps the devil far away from you. Prayers strengthen the protection that God has placed around you. It prevents the enemy from harming you. When you pray, the angels of God around you stand at attention, ready to ward off every attack aimed at you. God protects you and everything that belongs to you. He keeps you in perfect peace because you have fixed your heart on Him. Now that you know how to pray, how often you should pray, and what happens when you pray with intent every day, you should get on your knees right this moment and start saying your prayers with every sense of intentionality. As you do, you will see things turning around for your good in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because you encourage us to do more. God bless you. Amen. Do you ever feel so exhausted that you can no longer control things? Do you feel everything you've labored for over the years is all in vain? It's time to consider another approach, a time to embrace faith, relinquish control, and cry out for help and God's divine intervention. Perhaps the reason you haven't found solutions is because you failed to pray. There's a power in prayer and in trusting your life to God. You will find strength, guidance, and peace amidst life's uncertainties. Mind you, the time to seek God is now, not tomorrow or later. In the letter of Paul to the Philippians, he said, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Here, the Apostle Paul encourages you to bring your worries and requests to God through prayer. By doing so, you will experience the peace of God that transcends human understanding. In a world filled with uncertainty, troubles, and challenges, people are deeply worried about how to meet their needs and desires. There's also fear of the future, which causes present worries and anxiety. Are you battling an illness and feeling like your life is about to be cut short? This is not the end of your life. God still loves you and can heal you from every sickness. All you need to do is pray. Prayer changes situations. It is a powerful reminder of the importance of your supplication, faith, and trust in God. It's high time you surrender your worries, burdens, and troubles to the only Savior, and I know He will see you through. The Apostle emphasizes the significance of thanksgiving as another important aspect of expressing your faith in prayers. Thanksgiving involves expressing gratitude to God, which has the power to present Him as the ultimate solution amid ongoing problems. By appreciating and acknowledging God's goodness in prayer, you confuse the devil. The devil desires that you feel downcast and sorrowful, but when you engage in thanksgiving, you counteract his intentions by displaying a spirit of joy and gratitude instead. If you find yourself in a situation that requires God's intervention, it is crucial to prioritize your communication with Him over seeking advice from friends, relatives, or a counselor. 
Remember that you are considered God's son or daughter, and he remains your father. Therefore, it's important to not exclude him from your concerns, but rather approach him with the same openness and trust as you would an earthly father. However, it's essential to note that God is more interested in hearing your genuine prayers and requests than complaints or murmurs. He expects you to approach him with respect and sincerity, seeking his face and cultivating a deep, meaningful relationship with him. Prayer has the potential to yield divine peace. Amidst chaos and turmoil, when others anticipate you to be overwhelmed and troubled, the peace that radiates from within you will amaze them. It's through prayer that this transformative peace is obtained. It will also be evident to those around you who may expect you to succumb to the pressures of the world. It is a peace that originates from God, surpassing human comprehension. It acts as a shield to safeguard your heart and mind from the detrimental effects of anxiety and worry. Prayer is a powerful practice for everyone. It means connecting with the divine and seeking comfort in solace and distress. Prayer makes you acknowledge your limitations and recognize that there are certain aspects of life beyond your control. It stands as guidance and direction in times of confusion. Remember, God owns the roadmap of your life. Therefore, when you entrust your cares in times of prayer, He will guide and guard you. You need to be humble and have a surrendered heart while releasing your anxieties to God. In the Bible, you must have read the story of Hannah's prayer for a child in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Hannah was barren and deeply desired a child. She prayed earnestly to God, pouring out her heart's desire. Hannah's story highlights the power and efficacy of prayer. Despite her barrenness and emotional pain, Hannah turned to God in prayer and poured out her heart's desires before Him. This highlights the importance of seeking a personal relationship with God through prayer and expressing your deepest longings and concerns to Him. Your situation may be related to this. God wants me to tell you to pray and be patient. Hannah's persistent faith and trust in God's timing are other significant lessons you should learn. Despite facing years of disappointment and societal pressure, she remained steadfast in her faith and continued to believe that God would answer her prayer in His perfect time. This reminds us to have patience and trust in God's plans. Even when circumstances seem bleak or desires are not forthcoming, instead of unnecessary comparison, covetousness, or envy, seek God's face and you will find rest, joy, and peace at God's perfect time for you. You're not too old to have a new start. God's mercies are new every morning. It's time to surrender your desires to God, just like Hannah who vowed to dedicate her child to the service of God if her request was granted. Can you make such a promise to God that you'll give Him your all if He meets your petition? Surrendering your desires and plans is a willingness to submit to God's will. Trust in His plans because they're ultimately for your good. God's plan is made to give you peace and rest. God can transform your circumstances and bring breakthroughs in areas you may feel hopeless or lacking. You need to have strong faith in God's ability to work miracles in your life. There is nothing God can't do. There's no situation that's new to Him that He can't handle. He turned Hannah's barrenness into fruitfulness and blessed her with a son who became a renowned prophet. If God can do that, He can change your situation if only you let Him take over. Solomon, known for his immense wisdom in the Bible, emphasizes the importance of trusting in God in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. He said you should trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him and He will make straight your paths. This passage encourages everyone to place complete reliance on the Lord. It assures you that when you acknowledge God in all aspects of your life, He will make your path straight. Therefore, always acknowledge His presence and seek His guidance in all areas of your life. At some point in your journey, you may realize that your efforts are insufficient and you need the assistance or salvation of the Savior. During this season, your understanding is limited and imperfect. Relying on it alone can lead to misguided decisions and actions. Solomon urges you to submit your intellect, emotions, and will to God, acknowledging His authority and seeking His guidance. God's arrangement and plans for you are different. 
You can't fathom them. You must exercise patience and perseverance even in the face of challenges to align with His plan. God's timing is often different from ours, and every situation has a purpose. Trusting in God's plan allows you to navigate through difficult circumstances with resilience and hope. At this period of your life, you don't need to wait any longer. Even if you're a sinner or have been living a life filled with guilt, God's open hand is here to raise you. His salvation blood was shed because of the problem of sin. His death was a divine rescue from the tragedy sin has brought upon mankind. God still loves you and wants to handle the yoke of sin before uplifting the burdens on your neck. Your heart is far more important to Him. That's the major situation that needs to be dealt with. When your life has been given to the Savior, you can enjoy communion and a relationship with Him concerning your difficulties and challenges. There's a common observation about humans when it comes to having a relationship with God. So many people postpone or delay their pursuit of God, choosing instead to navigate life's journey independently, relying solely on their efforts and understanding. You should never fall into this cycle because the consequence of this self-reliance is that you may encounter obstacles or challenges along the way, which may cause you to become stuck or feel overwhelmed. You shouldn't wait to encounter the challenges or difficulties before remembering the need to seek the assistance of the Savior. Seeking God is not merely an optional or occasional practice. Prayer is an integral part of a person's spiritual journey and relationship with God. It implies that seeking God to take control of your situation is not only necessary but compulsory. The Bible emphasizes salvation for today and not tomorrow because tomorrow is uncertain. Offload your burdens to Jesus today. I know He will see you through. David, a prominent figure in the Bible and renowned songwriter, demonstrated unwavering belief in the power of his songs. In one of his psalms, specifically Psalm 55, verse 22, he said, Cast your cares upon the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be forsaken. David conveyed a profound message of trust and confidence in the divine. He expressed his conviction by urging people to cast their burdens upon the Lord, assuring them God would support and uphold them. Relinquish your worries and troubles to God and rely on His awesome power. God will provide the necessary strength and sustenance to endure the challenging circumstances. Know that God is faithful and capable of upholding His followers in distress. This affirmation of divine protection, providence, and unwavering support should reinforce your faith in God's promise to safeguard those who faithfully follow Him. Give Him all the load, forget about it, and stop worrying about all your cares. You can do nothing about most of the things you worry about. Why not just let God have them all? Therefore, surrender all your burdens and concerns to God. Let go of all the anxiety and rely on His strength. You don't need to delay. Drop your sins at the cross and all your situations at the mercy seat. You'll find refuge in God's mercy and grace. He's always available and willing to help you. Give Him a chance today. The more you pray, the more you move closer to your breakthrough. Perhaps you're just a prayer away from your desires. It will be too dangerous to give up now. Keep believing, keep holding on, and don't give up on God. He will definitely come through for you. When you're going through a difficult situation, you might feel like you're trapped in a hole in the ground with no way out. You might feel like you have only yourself to rely on and you don't have the strength to climb out. But you are not the only one in that hole. You're not the one who's going to get yourself out. God is right there with you. He's waiting for you to ask for His help. Once you do, He'll surely give it. You don't have to handle your situations alone. Instead, let God take over and get you out. The world places a lot of focus on the idea of inner strength. In difficult situations, we're told to dig deep and find the strength within ourselves necessary to face our problems. My friends, I'm about to tell you something you won't want to hear, but stick with me. The truth is, we are weak. That strength that we're told to look for, we don't have it, at least not by ourselves. Psalm 73 verse 26 says, My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. 
We are born sinners. We are susceptible to temptation. We have a natural desire to disobey God and follow Satan instead. This is why Eve took the fruit from the devil in the Garden of Eden. If we attempt to live on our own strength, we'll not be living at all. We'll be forsaking the Lord by thinking that we can live without Him. While we are mortal, existing in a certain time and place, God is immortal, existing since the beginning of time and forever afterwards. While we see only that which is in our immediate future, God sees everything from the past, present, and the future. While we succumb to the devil's temptations, the Lord fights against him and remains true to his word. We don't like to be called weak and fragile, yet that's exactly what we are. That's the bad news. The good news is that we don't have to be strong because we have God to be strong for us. God provides us with the strength that we lack. He is everything that we are not. Just as parents take care of their helpless infants, God takes care of us. He provides us with whatever we need when we need it. This begs the question, why would God create us to be so weak? The fact is God wants us to rely on him. He doesn't tear us down for the fun of it. He tears us down so that he can build us up again, stronger than ever. When Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount, he explained that those who follow his teachings and place their trust in him are like those who build their house on a foundation of rock. No matter how the wind blows and the waves beat against that house, it remains standing because of its firm foundation. On the other hand, those who forsake the Lord are like those who build their house on a foundation of sand. That house will come crashing down at the first sign of rain and wind. When we try to place our reliance and strength on ourselves, we are living in a house on the sand. We won't be able to face the storms that come our way will crumble and fall. But when we place our trust and strength in the Lord, we can face any storm without fear of damage. Just because we are born weak, that doesn't mean that we cannot be strong. God gives us the strength we need to face any situation as long as we are willing to let Him take over. But don't just take my word for it. Let's look at some biblical examples of God giving his people strength in difficult times when they give their troubles to him. When Joshua took over from Moses as the leader of the Israelites, he must have been terrified. He had big shoes to fill, and he must have doubted his ability to lead as Moses had. But God reassured him, saying, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Joshua chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. God had already demonstrated his strength and loyalty time and time again when Moses was the leader of the Israelites. He promised to free the Israelites from the slavery of Egypt, and that's exactly what he did. He showed his power when he parted the Red Sea, rained manna from heaven, and caused water to gush from a rock. He led the Israelites with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And just as he was with Moses, he promised to be with Joshua as well. He told Joshua to be strong and courageous, not because Joshua was strong, but because God was. God promised to be with him, and therefore Joshua could be strong and courageous because he was not on his own. Joshua trusted God to help him lead the Israelites to the Promised Land. But just like Moses, God commanded Joshua to follow his law. In verse 7, God says to Joshua, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. God wants us to rely on him for strength, but he also demands that we obey him. He wants to take over our situations, but we have to be willing to follow Him wherever He leads us. There will be times when God will guide you somewhere you don't want to go, like when He commanded Jonah to preach to the Ninevites. But if we want to receive His strength, we have to follow Him. Jonah thought he could be strong without God, and he ran away from his calling. But God proved that he was stronger when He caused the whale to swallow Jonah up and spit him out again once he had repented. But once he followed God's will, Jonah was able to warn the Ninevites about God's wrath against them, and God spared the city. 
We never know where God will lead us or what work He'll accomplish through us, but we can trust in wherever He leads. He will give us the strength we need to face whatever we encounter while following His will. Let's take a look at another example of God taking control, this time from the book of Samuel. Before we read about Samuel, we'll read about his mother, Hannah. Hannah was loved by her husband, but there was a gaping hole in her heart because she was unable to have children. She struggles desperately with this desire, and she turns to the Lord for help. She begs God for a son and promises to dedicate him to the Lord. She is praying so desperately that the priest thinks that she is drunk. But after she explains the situation, he says, May the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. Hannah returns home with a lighter heart, and God grants her her request. She has a baby boy named Samuel, and just as God granted what he promised, so too did Hannah. She returns to the house of the Lord when Samuel is a little bit older and dedicates him to God. It wasn't until Hannah gave her situation to God that she was able to maintain some semblance of peace. And God rewarded her for turning control over to Him by blessing her with the baby she so longed for. My friends, God wants to help us. He's waiting for us to call upon His name so that He can help us through whatever we face. He is always there, even when you think you're alone. Think about it for a minute. If God simply gave us whatever we ask for all the time, we would start to forget about Him. We already tend to do that when things are going smoothly. We would begin to think that we deserved all the good things that happened to us when that's not the case at all. We deserve a life of sorrow and pain because of our sinful natures. But God, in His mercy, allows us to live much better lives than we deserve. But sometimes, He tests us by bringing us through difficulties. He wants to see whether we'll turn inward or upward, to ourselves or to Him. When we turn to ourselves, we learn that our faith is not as strong as it should be and that our house is built on sand. When we turn to the Lord, our relationship with Him can be strengthened because we remember how much we rely on Him. When we give our situations over to God, we acknowledge that our lives do not belong to us, but to Him. Ultimately, God has control over everything, including us. And this is a very good thing because there is no one we would trust more with our lives than our Father in heaven. Whenever you find yourself in that deep pit, remember that you're not alone. There is a hand reaching out to you to help you up and out. All you have to do is take it. Don't look inside yourself for strength because you won't find any. We are weak and helpless creatures in the sight of God, but He offers us strength and power to those who just ask for it. Just as God was with Moses, Joshua, and the Israelites, He is always with you. When Hannah prayed to Him, He heard her plea and granted her request. But for God to take over, each of these people had to relinquish control. They accepted that they were not in control of their own lives and that they dedicated themselves to God. It's only when you give yourself to God that you can receive the strength and help that He offers. But when you do this, when you build your house on a foundation of rock, you will be immovable. No storm or wind will tear you down. Nothing will be able to separate you from the Lord your God. You can turn to God any time of night or day and He will hear you. You can trust that He will walk beside you at all times, both the good and bad. You can face the world with confidence because even though you're weak, God is strong and He is on your side, fighting for you each and every day. What's the craziest thing you can think of? Close your eyes and imagine your wildest dreams coming true. No matter what you're thinking of, it may seem unlikely or even impossible. But here's an important reminder, friends. God can do more than you could ever ask or imagine. That is not to say that if you ask Him to fulfill your wildest dream of going to the moon, He'll necessarily grant your request. But if He wanted to, He certainly could. God demonstrates His power every single day. On clear days, you can feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. That's God. When the leaves change color every autumn, from green to bright oranges, 
yellows, and reds. That's God. And when rain showers fall to nourish the earth, that's God too. He shows his power in all the little things we experience from day to day. But that's not all. He also shows his immeasurable power through larger events like floods, volcanic eruptions, and tornadoes. And sometimes his power can be felt but not seen, like when he answers your prayer by healing a sick loved one, or when he comforts you while you are going through a hard time. If you are ever doubting God's power, all you need to do is look around you. And if that doesn't work, you can turn to the Bible, where examples of God's power are demonstrated throughout its pages. Can you imagine a flood covering the whole earth? Can you imagine humanity and wild animals living on through a few survivors? Can you imagine that we are all descendants of the one man whose family God saved? It is certainly an incredible story, and it's hard to believe that it's true, but we know that it is. The recording of Noah and the Ark is found in Genesis 6 through 9. Genesis 7, 20 through 21 says, the waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 15 cubits. Every living thing that moved on land perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth, and all mankind. 15 cubits are equal to 22 feet in today's terms. That's an incredible amount of water, the likes of which the earth had never seen before or since. It's easy to read the story and be afraid of God's power. We should be afraid of God's power because it's greater than we can imagine. God should command our fear and respect. He sent the flood because the people on earth had become corrupt and wicked. We can expect to be punished when we disobey God and refuse to worship Him in the way that He commands. But we can also look at this story and see the benevolent nature of God. Noah was faithful to God and God rewarded him by saving him and his family from destruction. He helped Noah build an ark that would sustain his family and the animals from the flood that destroyed the rest of the world. And when the flood was over, God made a covenant with Noah and all of mankind. Genesis 9, 14 through 16 says, Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. I think it's fair to say that today's world is full of violence and corruption, and yet we don't have to fear being wiped out by God. God proved his awesome power through the flood and his wonderful benevolence through the rainbow. Whenever you see those beautiful fragments of light, remember the promise God made to never again send a flood of such great proportions. God's power and benevolence are also shown in the New Testament through Jesus. In Mark 5, Jesus is approached by a man named Jairus who pleads with him to come and heal his sick daughter. Jesus agrees, but while on the way, he takes the time to heal another sick woman. In the meantime, Jarius received word that his daughter was dead. Jarius must have been devastated. He probably felt hopeless. But in verse 36, Jesus tells Jarius, don't be afraid, just believe. Can you think back to a time when you felt like all hope was lost? Have you ever felt so lost in the darkness that you thought you would never see the light again. In those situations, remember Jesus' words. Don't be afraid, but believe in him and his power. Jairus did believe, and when Jesus arrived at his house, he resurrected the little girl, and she sat up as if she had never been ill. Jairus' friends and family didn't believe in Jesus' power. They laughed at Jesus when he told them that the girl was only sleeping. But Jarius held on to his faith, and he was rewarded for it. My friends, when everything seems lost, don't lose your faith too. As long as you hold on to Jesus, you have something worth holding on to.
If these Bible passages don't convince you of God's power, then Jesus' death and resurrection surely will. God made the greatest sacrifice he could make when he sent his son to earth to die on the cross. When Jairus was saved from grieving the loss of his daughter, God willingly watched his son die a brutal death at the hands of his people. Jesus suffered the punishment that we deserve, but the story doesn't end with his death. God once again demonstrated his power by raising Jesus from the dead three days after he had been crucified. Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Take a moment to let that sink in. The God who has the power to destroy the world loves you so much that he sacrificed his only son for you. He could have allowed us all to join Satan in hell, but instead, he created a place for believers in heaven. He wants us to be with him for all eternity. Jesus could have tried to run away and avoid the cross, but he didn't. He knew what was going to happen to him, and he allowed it to happen, because that's how much he loves you. God and his son love us more than we can imagine. And because God loves you, he wants to help you. When you are struggling, all you need to do is turn to God with your problems. Ask him for whatever you think you need. Matthew 7, 7 through 8 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. God has the power to flood the entire earth. He has the power to resurrect the dead. You never have to doubt that God has the power to answer your prayers. You never have to fear that you are asking too much of God. Remember the greatest demonstration of his power and love through the deliverance of salvation through Jesus. When the disciples asked how it could be possible to be saved, Matthew 19, 26 says, Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. There is no doubt that man is capable of incredible things. There was a time when it seemed impossible for man to land on the moon, and yet we did. Today's technology allows us to find answers to our questions in seconds with minimal research. Cars get us from point A to point B in much less time than it took a horse and carriage. But despite these accomplishments and constant advancements, man is limited. We don't like to hear that. We like to say that the sky's the limit, that we should reach for the stars, etc. And there's certainly nothing wrong with aiming high, but we do need to recognize that our power is very limited compared to God's. And any power or achievements that we do have comes from God. Without God, we can do nothing, but with God, anything is possible. In Philippians 4, 12 through 13, Paul says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. It's hard to imagine being content when you are homeless and hungry, but like Paul, you can turn to God in any situation and he will get you through it. Just because you can't imagine being happy when you feel anything, that doesn't mean that God can't deliver happiness to you. Remember, He can do anything. And if you have God on your side, that means that you can do anything too. Wherever you are listening to this right now, look around you. Whether you are inside or outside, everything you see belongs to God. But He has given all of these things to you to enjoy. The next time you feel the wind against your back or the sun on your skin, thank God for sharing his amazing power. Give God the fear and respect that he deserves, but don't lose sight of the fact that he is also caring and loving. He can flood the whole earth, but he has promised not to again. And he prepared a place for us by his side in heaven as long as we worship him in the way that he commands and deserves. 
keep your faith in him and don't let others distract you from it like Jairus' friends and family tried to do. When you maintain your faith in God, you will be rewarded if not in this life, then surely in the next one. Take all of your troubles to him with the knowledge that he has the power to fix every one of them. But remember that God knows what you need better than you do, and he will deliver what you need whether or not you know you need it. We are mere specks of dust in the grand scheme of things. But God looked down on us and had pity on us. He chose us as his people, and he watched his son die so that we could be free. He did all of this, and he can do so much more. Never lose faith in God, because he can do all that we ask of him in prayer. A good number of believers only think of prayer when they're less busy or in the need of something from God. However, on the contrary, God expects us to pray before we do anything at all. I don't want to sound ridiculous, so I'll explain what everything here means. When I say that you should pray before you do anything, I mean you should seek God's counsel before you make any decision. It means you should seek God's guidance on the issues of your life that matter. This includes your daily routine like going out, accepting a business proposal, starting a new business, etc. God is interested in every little detail of your life. Whatsoever is important to you is of the same importance to God. He is the God that rules in the affairs of men. There are no exceptions to what you should pray about. It simply means committing all of your affairs and activities to the hands of God, your Father. I know how this sounds, but that's because you probably have not been practicing it. You probably feel like you should only pray when you're confused. But the thing is, there are times that what appears to be good to you might be dangerous. Talking to God saves you the stress of regret, as God will always reveal what's best to anyone who cares to know. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Our emphasis is on the phrase, in everything. The Word of God is precise and accurate. It does not exaggerate. When it says, in everything, I've come to understand that it means exactly that. Sometimes, it's not even God that will have to change your course or redirect you. There will be times that what you set out to do will be what God wants you to do. But praying about it gives you confirmation, peace, and a guarantee of God's backup while you're executing it. I know how it feels when you're stranded at a job you didn't tell God about before accepting the offer. It feels like you don't have the right to talk to Him about the frustration you're experiencing because you didn't include Him before starting. However, a greater problem will be you thinking God is punishing you for that. No, He is a Father that's always on the lookout for our best interest to save us. If only, we'll communicate to Him in prayer. It makes a lot of difference to be associated with God. The people of the world do not have this advantage, but you do. I need you to get rid of the mentality that prayer is only necessary when you're in a dire situation. Nothing can be further from the truth. If you can understand prayer as a father-child communication, you'll do a lot with it. Did you know that God can help you choose the right diet, escape a bad day, or help you with the wrong dress choice. There are some things that make your relationship with God fascinating. The way He responds with the best direction and guidance on how to get things done, when to get them done, and where to get them done is amazing. A video of Priscilla Sheary went viral some time ago. She shared her experience with certain hair products, how they affected her health, and how God through the Holy Spirit ministered to her about it. Now, her doctor had given the best advice she could, but that alone was not enough to help her out of her situation. On her way home, she asked God for help while driving, and right there, God spoke to her in a way that the doctor couldn't. That marked the beginning of a great turnaround in her health as related to her hair. Beloved, how often do you pray before getting even the simplest task done? I'm not just referring to a marathon of 24-7 prayers done in tongues and locked up in a prayer closet. Well, I'm not trying to talk down long prayer hours, especially if you can do that and still handle your day-to-day -day activities. However, I am referring to how you commit your plans to God before setting out to work on them. How often do you communicate with your Father? 
the duration is not the bone of contention here. The frequency is. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and all your plans will succeed. It pays to commit your plans to the Lord. For your plans to succeed, you don't need to kill a Goliath. You only need to tell God about it in prayer. This looks simple, but it's one of the things we find difficult to do. Are you unsure of whom to talk to about your plans for today, the month, or the last quarter of the year? Tell God about it and expect a response from Him. He will lead you to principles that, when you apply, will yield tangible results. He will grant you the grace to do even beyond your imagination. He will give you the connections you need for your plans to be perfectly established. Perhaps you have been more of the talking type. You only know how to talk to God about your plans, but you don't know how to identify His leading or hear from Him. You need to know that God's Word is always near you. He's always around you. You don't have to look far away to hear God. Sometimes His peace is all you need for confirmation. Are you thinking of joining friends to hang out? Why don't you tell God about it? You are a limited being, and for this reason, you may not be able to tell if catastrophe lies ahead. God, however, knows the end from the beginning, and He can tell you about it if you'll just talk to Him about it. Waiting to hear from God before doing anything is for your good more than it is for God. It doesn't only keep you from trouble, but it also gives you motivation, peace, stability, and the assurance that your Heavenly Father is for you and with you in whatever you're doing. To demonstrate the importance of maintaining a healthy communication with God, the Lord Jesus emphasized prayer while He was on earth. In one of His teachings, He said, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. He not only taught it in the mountains and synagogues, but He also practiced it. In Luke chapter 9, where Jesus fed the multitude of 5,000 with two fishes and five loaves of bread, we see that He lifted the meal to God and gave thanks before asking the disciples to distribute it to the people. Imagine if He just took it and gave it out to the people without telling God about it in prayer. Would there have been a multiplication? How about when He was to raise Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha, from the dead? He raised his voice to God in prayer before calling Lazarus to come forth. These are typical illustrations that exemplify the need for you to pray before doing anything. When the apostles were about to choose someone who would replace Judas Iscariot, they prayed in Acts chapter 1, verses 24 through 26, saying, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the eleven apostles. They could have done the guesswork and gone ahead with the appointment, but they prayed before anything else, and God directed them. If you are at a point in your life where you need to make a choice, maybe you want to get married and are not too sure of who the right partner is, take it to God in prayer. Maybe you've been offered two job opportunities and are confused about which one to accept. Why don't you take it to God in prayer? We take a lot upon ourselves when we refuse to pray to God. It's synonymous with carrying our burdens. How far can we go with that? Our burdens are too heavy for our weary bones. We shouldn't allow their magnitude to overwhelm our thoughts so much that we forget we have a burden bearer behind us. Dear believer, the importance of prayer before taking each step in your Christian journey cannot be overemphasized. Before you eat, you need to pray. Before you embark on a journey, you need to pray. Before you take medication, go to sleep, get to work, begin to clear your table, or when you get back home safely after a rough or beautiful day, you need to pray. As ridiculous as this may sound, you can as well ask God to help you pick a perfect outfit for the day. You can ask God how to approach your boss at work, how to talk to that neighbor, or even how to witness to someone in the neighborhood about Christ. This is the secret to the success of many of the Christian leaders and models you know. They have mastered the art of seeking God's counsel regarding every step they want to take. Before you talk to your spouse about that burning issue in your heart, why don't you pray to God first? This will melt the anger in your heart, change your reactions, and pave the way for a peaceful resolution. 
Thus, Jesus continues to reign in your home. Before you talk to your rebellious child, take it to God in prayer. You'll be amazed at how God can have touched his or her heart before you talk to him or her. That is what involving God can do. Mark chapter 1, verse 35 says this about Jesus. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. One of the best ways to take everything to God in prayer is to start your day with prayers. There you receive strength in place of your weakness, boldness in the place of your fear, and grace in the place of limitation. Starting your day with prayer helps you visualize your day while you let God into your daily to-do list. It's a time of refreshing. Any time you set aside to do this is always worth it. The Word of God says a day spent in the courts of God is better than a thousand spent elsewhere. Make it a duty to be so conscious of God's presence with you daily. You will see the joy of the Lord flowing like a river in your life.